The world is changing in a manner that we cannot imagine. Just take out your cell phone and look at how many social media you have from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. But do we ever imagine how this all started? Their concept was so small. They started out in a room, in a garage, and have become one of the biggest tech giants in the history. But why do we always get connected with them? We're so into these social media platforms. But for teenagers like me and my peers, they have become a little bit mainstream. Because when we walk home on Friday after turning in all our assignments, giving all the tests, social media like Facebook won't help us relax. But what helps is turning on that device, our new social media, and turning on our Xbox or PlayStation, and using games like Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto. These all started with one simple concept. Grand Theft Auto and Call of Duty are one of the most known games. But what made them famous? What made them attractive in a manner that we tend to buy it the day it releases? They go out of stock sometimes. But what's their issue? What's the reason? We get to connect with people that are in various parts of the world, from North America, Europe, Asia, and various regions. Now, why am I bringing video games all of a sudden, while I was talking about social media, shouldn't connection be more on social media than video games? Well, not quite. Because teenagers, chatting is not enough. iMessage, that's not enough for us. We want more. And I have learned a valuable lesson of computer programming and video games through these kind of concepts. Now, going to my story, I, when I was an elementary student or even in middle school, I was like normal people playing games. I was way much into games, and it was like my hobby. While other people used to read and write, I used to go on my computers and play games. And it always interested me to see that with my one keyword, with my one key space, I was able to move the character. I always thanked the God who created these things, because I didn't know what was happening in the background. But when I was in high school, I finally realized what all these things were. Because I started programming my own games. And this is where a key part of my lesson comes out. I wanted to be one of the successful person creating one of the biggest games in the industry. Because that's what most of the startup businesses start with. I didn't know what to do except creating small games and giving it to my friends to beta test it and check it out and have fun. Because there was no way I could launch it. But then looking at them giving ratings on my games and looking at all the comments, I decided that it was time for a global launch. So I launched my first single player games into some site called Congregate, which is one of the biggest video game hosting sites. Now this was a really unique experience. As soon as I pressed that button to submit it to the site, I was relaxed and I was sitting down there thinking, I will be the next biggest game developer in the history. But after two weeks, I go back to the site to check that I just had 24 gameplays. Well, there were other games who had billion and million gameplays. That always made me think and frustrate at the same time. Because what was the reason that these games were succeeding while my game was a failure? Well, I decided to become a scientist and do a research on this. So I started going to congregate, play games every single day. But after one or two weeks of playing, I realized that I was no longer playing my own game. Rather, I was playing these developed games because I was really gravitated by them. Their way of attracting users was something I never got. But as I played them, I looked at my own games and I was like, what is this? This is not my game. I cannot create this game because it was not attracting me anymore. And then I realized the answer to my question about why my game was a failure. It was a reason because I was not connecting my users to the outer world. While playing games in Congregate, I was connecting users from different, different areas, like Spain or even like India. But my game was a single player game that was just challenging, but it was not attracting anyone. So I decided to create my own multiplayer game and launch it. After two weeks of programming, I launched my first multiplayer game, and I again thought that I will be the next game developer in the history. <laughs> but two weeks, I go back there, 
but I see a different change. Rather than having a 24 gameplays, I had about 164 gameplays in two weeks, with a rating about three, to, three out of five ratings. And this really interested me to think that that was the answer, that I had found a conclusion to what I believed in, that creating games in a multiplayer background helped me succeed. Now going with the, with the gaming industry, let's look at one of the new games called Soccer 2, created by me for this event. compare my game with different games in the same manner. I'm playing here trying to score a ball in a football game. But am I actually succeeding? Not quite. But I will succeed because I'm, I, I will understand the algorithms due to the reason that this is a single player game. Because the opponents are going to play the same AI system every single time and I can use this as my idea to beat the game and score 10 goals to the opponent. But let's take for example a multiplayer game which is included in this game. With this, various users can compete with another user, and they will be able to use various strategies allowing me to challenge myself and try to score more than one goal, because I cannot score 10 out of 12 goals in a multiplayer game. It's impossible. But when I look at these games, why is it important for us to understand a multiplayer gaming? We're not going to go out of this room, take out a computer, and start programming a multiplayer game. Why is this important for us to understand? Well, there's one thing, because we like to succeed in life. My peers and various people here want to be in the States, million people watching them and them trending on Facebook or Twitter as they launch their new products. Becoming the next Tim Cook or Bill Gates is their dream. But how can we achieve it? And why does multiplayer gaming play a role on this? And there's one part on this. That is connecting your user to the outer world to the virtual world so that they can react with other people. Now, my friends, there are very of them, there are various of them who want to create a startup. Their ideas are great. I cannot imagine how they create those ideas. Their imagination is great. I can believe that their startup will become the next billionaire startup. But in about one week or even one month, they close it and they say they couldn't succeed. Now what is the reason behind it? Why do they not succeed? There are various reasons of connecting users. If you do not connect users, your sales are not going to happen in the manner you expect, but rather it's going to decrease. And same thing was shown with my game. Going back to my game, when I was testing out my game in Congregates and playing other games, there's one great story I found that I was able to use as a part of my research. And that was, I was able to meet with people that I never get to meet in real life. For example, I was playing a game called Need for Speed, which is pretty popular among teenagers. As I was playing it, I was able to connect with someone from Spain. He only knew Spanish, not English, so how could I connect with him? But thankfully that I was taking Spanish on my freshman year, I was able to use that as a way to connect with him. But what really interested me was that I was able to connect with someone, not in the United States, but in Spain. And that is the way we create new startups. Even going with my own startup business idea. First, I just started out giving it to my friends. I wanted to launch globally, so I went to congregate. But rather, it was not a success. It was not succeeding because I needed more game designers. So as I launched my game idea called Homebrew Gamings, I met with people, various people who are in game industries. At the same time, I met with someone from my home country, which is about three to five thousand miles from away from here. I was able to chat with them, because, but I never knew them but I knew that he had the same goal as me. And we were able to create and start a startup idea. And this same connectivity rule can be used to create a startup idea. Because of that, connectivity is the biggest startup idea. Thank you.